Hi, God bless you, Brother Ferdinand here, welcoming you to Truth in Brief. Thanks for, you know, joining and for sharing. And I encourage you to, you know, click on the subscribe button there so that you can receive these videos delivered directly to you, as well as other messages, you know, that I speak in other conferences and uh, uh, that we put out, you know, at Eternity Ministries. Healing in the Word. That's what we began to look at last time. And I want to, you know, look a bit further on that theme with you. Believing God for healing in your body, healing in your home, healing in your mind, and every other area of your life. Now, this is Psalm 107. I'm reading Psalm 107. Uh, let's read it from verse 17. It said, Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, we are afflicted. You see, sin and transgression can bring affliction. Uh, that doesn't mean that anybody who is going through a challenge, a difficulty, an affliction, that it must be because, you know, the person has sinned. Not necessarily. But the fact is that sin can open the door for the enemy to afflict an individual, to afflict a family. And if that is your case, don't worry. The blood of Jesus Christ paid both for our sins and for our sicknesses. You see, once you come to Christ, head or tail, devil lose. In the book of James, he said, you know, he said he's sick among you. Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save, heal the sick person. He said, and the Lord will raise him up. Now listen, he says, and if he has committed sins, it will be forgiven. In other words, both the sin and the sickness will be taken away at the same time by God's power and by God's grace, all purchased by the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. But the fact, again, is sin and iniquity can open the door to affliction, which is why you must live right so that you don't open the door to the enemy to ravage your body and destroy your family. Uh -huh. Okay, so it says, their soul abhorred all manner of food. They lost appetite. They drew near to the gates of death. So now they're about to die. This is terminal illness. And then look what he says in verse 19. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. So people don't cry out to God in their trouble. They do all kinds of things except cry to God. Huh? But these ones, they cry to God in their trouble. I want you to cry out to God. I remember one time I had this terrible double pneumonia. I was coughing. The sputum I was coughing was so bad, brownish in color. In fact, at the point I was coughing out blood. This was while I was in medical school. Uh, and the thing was so terrible. Fever knocked me down. My chest was paining. I was burning, coughing. And I cried out to the Lord. I remember getting back, you know, uh, from... Uh, where we are doing our training in medical school, to my room, shut the door, I cried out to God. I came out of that room totally healed. Every symptom disappeared till tomorrow. Uh, they cry out to God. Don't just cry to human beings or complain. When you are going through difficulties, cry out to God. And when you cry, if you want to cry, cry tears. Pour out your heart to God. It's your father. Uh, don't just keep quiet and you are internalizing the pain. And he said, God in heaven, and he answers prayers. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. God will bring you out of every distress. Now look at verse 20. He says, he sent his word and healed them. He sent his word, one version said, and it healed them. The word healed them, and he delivered them from their destructions. It healed them. There is healing in the word. Why is that so? Because don't forget that it was that word that created everything. That's the word that upholds all things. The Bible says he is upholding all things by the word of his power. That's the word that created heaven and earth. That's the word <laughs> that God spoke and everything came to be. So that word can heal you. But for that to happen, you need to attend to the word. Meditate. Gather together scriptures that talk about your healing and your health and meditate on them. Incline your ear to them. Stay with them. Cry out to God. 
and stay with that word. Begin to confess that word. Pray the word. Believe the word. Speak the word. And that word is going to bring healing. And I'm sending that word to you even as you are listening to this. In the name of Jesus, I send the word of God into your heart, into your bones, into your womb, into your heart. Be healed in Jesus' name. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, receive the miracle-working power of God's word in Jesus' name. There is healing in the word, uh, my dear friend. Engage that word. And that word will bring healing, multi-dimensional healing, healing to your family. Just gather the appropriate scriptures and stay with it. And you will experience the fullness of all that God has ordained for you. Uh, don't forget to you know, reach out to me, share your testimony of how the word of God has brought healing to you, of other things that God has done in your life as you have engaged truth in brief. And... Uh, we will give the praise to God. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Glory to Jesus. God bless you. Goodbye.